An important force concept is the net force. The net force is the vector sum of all forces acting on a system. Understanding Newton's laws of motion will require that the difference between a force and the net force is clearly understood. The net force is not just any old force acting on the system. The net force is the sum of all forces acting on the system. This next example may make it clear. In the picture below, 20 soldiers hold a log against a fortified castle door and attempt to push the door open. Each soldier is able to supply a forward force on the beam of 50 newtons. Find the sum of the horizontal forces that these soldiers are exerting on the log. So what I'll do is I'll draw a free body diagram for the log. And let's say that we represent the log as a dot, just like I had done in my previous video. When one soldier is holding the log, they can push with a forward force of 50 newtons. But when we add additional people, each of them can also push with 50 newtons. This has an additive effect to the total force that the people are exerting. And we would want to add all the arrows together. There will be 20 arrows, each worth 50 newtons. So the sum of the forward forces that the soldiers are exerting could be represented by 20 times 50. The soldiers are able to exert a thousand newtons of forward force when they combine their efforts. But let's say that even though they do exert that large force, let's say that they don't break down the door. Let's say the door is able to withstand the force. So what I drew on the left is not actually a complete picture of all the forces acting on the log. I'm going to combine all the individual 20 forces that we have here. It's too many to even draw. I'll combine them into one vector. And I'm going to call that the sum of the forces that the soldiers exert. I'm going to call that the sum of the forces that the soldiers exert in the x direction. But what other forces act on this beam? Well, the door can exert a force on the beam too. But the door makes contact with the beam here on the right side of the beam and it'll create a normal force pushing the beam in the leftward direction. That'll be the force of the door. So as we can see the reason why the beam doesn't crash through the door is because the door is able to supply a normal force in order to balance with the forward force that the soldiers are pushing with. Now there would be other forces involved which don't really play a part in whether the beam crashes through the door or not. There will be a downward force of gravity. But the beam doesn't get pulled down. It remains motionless. That's because the soldiers are holding it up. The soldiers can exert a combination of normal forces and frictional forces in order to keep that beam elevated. I'll just call that the sum of the forces in the upward direction. So what do you notice about the forces in the diagram that I've drawn? 
Well, one thing that jumps out is that the force pushing the beam to the right is canceled by the force pushing the beam to the left. And that's a reason why it doesn't crash through the door. Also, the force of gravity that pulls the beam down is canceled by a force supplied by the soldiers through their efforts. And that's why the log doesn't crash to the ground. This brings us to Newton's first law of motion, sometimes referred to as the law of inertia. It goes like this. An object's velocity will remain constant unless the object is acted upon by an unbalanced force. So Newton's first law allows this beam to remain at rest precisely because the forces are balanced and there is no unbalanced force. The law implies that if no unbalanced forces act on an object, then both the magnitude and the direction of the object's velocity will not change as time goes on. So if the beam starts at rest and it feels these forces, it's going to stay at rest. But the law also tells us that if no unbalanced forces act on a moving object, then the object will remain moving with a constant speed and constant direction as time goes on until an unbalanced force acts on it. That's something we'll look at shortly. The term translational equilibrium means the sum of the forces acting on a system is zero. The system does not accelerate. The system's velocity, both speed and direction, remain constant. And since the net force acting on this system must be zero for it to be in translational equilibrium, that will mean that the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero, the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero, and even the sum of the forces in the third dimension z are zero as well. If, on the other hand, the sum of the forces acting on a system is not zero, then there will be an unbalanced net force, and that system will accelerate. All of this is implied by Newton's first law of motion. So let's answer the remaining questions. If each soldier was able to supply a forward force on the beam of 50 newtons, what normal force does the castle door exert on the beam if the door doesn't open? I had answered that already. The normal force of the door on the beam is going to be a thousand newtons to match the forward force that the soldiers are pushing with. What is always true about a motionless object? Well, we know that the velocity is zero and the acceleration is zero. Are there any unbalanced forces acting on the log according to the picture that I've drawn above? The lengths of the force vectors tell us about how strong they are, how large they are. And so as we can see, they are all balanced, so no. Is the log in translational equilibrium? According to the force diagram that I've drawn, it is.